Hello, lovely podcast people. Um, Just a quick intro to this guest episode I did with the guys from Flex Success. Really cool podcast, very fun. I mean, at some points, potentially too loose. Uh, But I know as if you're a regular listener of the podcast, you'll enjoy that. We cover, you know, as with lots of my guest appearances, we cover lots of different topics. There's some kind of nice in fun easy listening enjoyable stuff in there um and cover kind of topics i maybe don't touch on when i'm just talking about a specific podcast in my own episode so yeah had lots of cool feedback from these guys um australians are always good aren't they to talk to yeah so i had had lots of good feedback from this podcast since it was released by them but uh hope you enjoy it let me know what you think hope it's helpful and um until next time next week much love Welcome back, everyone. We have a very special episode for you today. We have, uh, have I forgotten his name? No. <laughs> <laughs> Martin McDonald from McDonald's or Mac Nutrition Uni. I'm not sure which one. Can you please give yourself an intro? <laughs> yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. Um, do you want like a bit of a background for, for your listeners on stuff? I would assume that everyone knows who you are, but maybe that's an unfair assumption. So yeah. what do you do? Why do you do it? And who are you? <laughs> It's one of those things, isn't it? Do you know who I am? Uh, uh, no, I don't actually. Oh, good. Um, so, yeah, who am I? Um, I guess background is, you know, was as a performance nutritionist, clinical performance nutritionist. So my kind of uh, training, I sometimes have people saying on Instagram, like, oh, you're a bit shady about what qualifications you have. I'm like, Do you, I'm not just... I'm actually just not going, oh, look at me, look at all my qualifications. It's just like, oh, they're all on LinkedIn or on my website if you really want to know. Um, but yeah, my background is uh, uh, sport and exercise science, actually. I kind of, through enjoying training and exercise, thought I was probably going to be an SNC coach of sorts and um, or a sports scientist. But then through competing in natural bodybuilding for five years, I kind of fell in love with the nutrition side. And um ended up doing my master's in sports nutrition and then a postgraduate in clinical nutrition, because as I'm sure you guys are aware, just as you start working with people, this outside of athletes and physiques and and this and the other, it becomes, there's always little drops of clinical stuff that's going on. And um, so I did that and um, had a consultancy um, working with athletes, governing bodies, and then general population and, uh, we did lots of corporate wellness and um, did that for a while. And then back in 2016, we, as you said there, Mac Nutrition Uni, people were like, oh, you know, you should write a course for people to do. And um, it's kind of funny, actually, because we had this consultancy and it took all of our time. It was very busy. And um, I was like, you know, we'll, we'll write a course. You might get 50 people on it. And um, we'll just stick some videos on YouTube and um, yeah, launch this course. And it just went mental and, uh, you know, global 65 countries. And uh, we had to basically do a bit of crowdfunding initially because people wanted something. I thought it was going to be like a little 12 week course. And uh, people like, oh, it's going to be the best course in the world. Martin McDonald's doing this thing. We're all going to be qualified nutritionists. No pressure. I was like, what the hell? I was like, it's just going to be a little YouTube thing. Um, so we ended up having to get this like academic grade university learning platform and everything, which was just big bucks. Um, so we, we basically said, you know, if you lot want this, put your money where your mouth is. And um, that ended up going really well. So we were able to do it. But yeah, now that's become um, what I do really. I'm, I don't work with clients myself anymore. Um, I kind of... I love public speaking. That's my main jam. I remember, you know, in Facebook memories, it comes up. Yeah. Um, and and I, this thing came up from about seven years ago. Oh, I'd love, if I could, I'd love to just make a living just from doing public speaking and talks and education. And that's why initially I was a, a university lecturer for a few years and I loved it, but it was like the red tape I didn't like and oh. um, all that kind of marking of home, you know, courseworks and exams I didn't like. And, um, but I love doing that. And that's, so that came up and, um, you know, now I do public speaking almost as a hobby. I don't, you know, it's like the Mac nutrition uni is my, 
income and my job. But then, you know, in 2019, I just was like, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to do a world tour of talks and um, don't really need to make any money from it, just as long as it sort of breaks even. And then just waltz stuff around Australia and Dubai and New Zealand and, and the whole of the UK. It was cool. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of me now is... Yeah, this course that qualifies people and, you know, we've got a big contingent over in Australia. Um, we kind of secured the insurance to practice and to, to work with clients, you know, in person, but globally online. Um, and so, yeah, that's me. Oh. And I'm, I'm so glad that that's you because the industry has quite a low barrier to entry and I think it's easy for people to get lost in the weeds and not sure where to turn and have bad influences and really yeah. harm clients. And I think that you yeah. fill that space so nicely for coaches. Mm, thanks. Yeah, I suppose I probably should be a bit more clear about what I guess the premise of Matt Nutrition Uni is just this the whole I've, I feel super privileged actually I'm not sure I've said how much I've said this in public but super super privileged because there's other great people in the industry who probably could have done the same I was lucky that I there's lots of big names in the industry but they're kind of one man band or, or you know um, you know they do their thing really well they're one thing whereas I always wanted staff and you know, didn't really want to do any work myself. Um, well, yeah, none of the hard, you know, the I'm hard like work. Yeah. Just, Just the fun work. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I feel really privileged that no one had really brought out an evidence-based nutrition qualification. That there, there are others that kind of sort of tick the box, but they're just, they've got little bits of junk in there that just aren't very good or they don't quite have, you can just read a textbook and pass the course. You don't actually have tutors and you don't have interaction and feedback and you know working through it and having your learning really checked up on rather than just a multiple choice test and, and, and whatever so um i feel super privileged that it hadn't been done a truly evidence-based course that like you've said you know stops people being misled or having mentors that are a bit weird and wacky and crazy ideas and um and, and stop, you know, it ultimately stops them hurting people or, or doing wrong by their clients. So the fact that I was in the time and space where I was able to be the person that created it, I love that. Like, it's cool. I'm, I'm really happy about it. Is it going to exist beyond you in 50 years from now? Yeah. Oh, well, geez. Funny question. Uh, or, uh, you went straight I, to the death question. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Straight That's to the jugular. <laughs> I mean, just destroyed don't, me. don't mind yeah. for the, the daddy sign over his right, uh, uh, his right shoulder, <laughs> our left shoulder. It's not more than a little. Yeah. <laughs> Some doozies. Um, yeah. I don't have much no. of a filter, Martin. Sorry. When I think things, oh. it's just like, hey, woo. Good, yeah. I'm happy with that, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it will. Um, I think it's – that's the nice thing about it being – it isn't just me. Like, there is a whole management team that runs the show. There's – you know, we get praised so highly for our student support and, and, you know, we've got three dedicated sort of customer relations executives who aren't nutrition. Uh, they are literally there to help people because it, it's, it's mental. I've almost turned partly into, it, it's my lecturing role, but with adults, with businesses and, you know, amazing people, but you still have this pastoral thing of like really needing to care for people sometimes. Um, you know, like the pandemic, never before has it things been so bad. So it's what pandemic? I haven't heard of it. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's like affecting people's businesses and, and families and this, that, and the other. And it's like being able to support them in that way. Um, so yeah, I do, I very much do think it will um outlive me. Um but, but but it's also funny because I, I just love it. I d almost don't want it to exist. I'd probably be better if it wasn't just the Martin show, but uh, I just love talking and making people laugh. And, and I'm always like saying to my staff, like, well, I'm not always saying it, that's wrong, but my lectures are better than yours. <laughs> you know, it's like competition. Well, I'm not saying that, but I, that's not true. Basically, I get upset when students go, say Sarah Duffield, she's our sort of head of nutrition here. People are like, oh my goodness, Sarah's first lecture. That this is my favorite of the course so far. And she's like, and I'm like, oh, oh, I see how really? it is. 
right yeah i'll and take some marks off you um <laughs> so, <laughs> move serious to the back end you know yeah Thinking back to uni though um i think some of the lessons that i remember or the way that i absorb information most is when a lecturer presented something in a kind of a funny way or gave some sort of narrative around it mm, yeah even though information can be so useful um or true if it's dry it's really hard to absorb at least for me I so, say that also aligns with your personality you know whereas yeah. you might have an average show like super boring and they're just like i'm just here to learn yeah. you know and, and then yeah. lectures like real dry and they're like this stuff is fantastic he really gets to the point they would hate <laughs> you Mark. they would hate you yeah that's so funny you've said that there are genuinely some students who so i go off topic i talk around the subjects like we we had this conference um in 2016 and it was the art and science of nutrition counseling beyond calories and macros so it was all talking about communication and you know expert communication we had like a ex-hostage negotiations officer who's now a communications expert basically talking about how what's good listening and what's you know being able to paraphrase and summarize with your clients and make them feel heard um but what one of the speakers he talked about storytelling and the best way to get people to remember is through storytelling, providing feeling within your speaking. But um, yeah, I massively go off topic, but, but to provide context and people will literally say, I remember you talking about this client and blah, blah, blah. And you took her sock off like this. And that, you know, it's like, um, that sounds a bit weird. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks daddy. Weird. Um, <laughs> Yeah, why why were you taking a sock off? No, so it was like body composition testing. Um, she had a femur. And I was like doing her calves and I was just like, pulled a sock like that. Mm. Really, really bad edema. But anyway, some people just go, yeah, just aren't a fact. You know, 99% of students are like, love the anecdotes, really puts it in perspective, keeps me engaged, blah, blah, blah. But some people are just like, you could have done that in 60 minutes. And it was a... <laughs> Well, wow. you're speaking to the 99%, not the 1% yeah. boring people, yeah. right? <laughs> I couldn't imagine listening to this. I mean, I'd, you'd just be put on one and a half speed, of which case well, then you become comical anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the other good thing is is they can speed it up. Um, but And also people go, oh, the lectures are so young, long. I don't know. You know, I thought it would be an hour and it was an hour and a half. And I'm like, that it's great that it's an online course then. You can pause it and come back when you have an extra half hour. Uh, but yeah, learning that online. is actually one interesting thing. Like, I'll, I'll listen to someone like yourself or anybody else in the industry, and I always listen on one and a half speed. So does Liz. I never used to, but I always do. And then when I have a conversation with them for the first time, I'm like, they're so much more relaxed, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. they actually pause in between their, in between <laughs> yeah. their sentences. And I'm like, yeah. oh, like the recall, like the speed of recall. I'm like, damn, man, they can recall really yeah. fast. And then I'm like, oh, no, they're just normal. I just listen to them on one and a half speed. Yeah, now, being in the so industry funny. for so long, Martin, and um, being exposed to so many coaches that are exposed to so many clients, I imagine that you have a really robust idea of what the myths and problems and fads and stuff are. And I wonder if this question is too broad. Maybe you can give us <laughs> your top two that you wish would disappear and maybe why you think they're not disappearing. Oh, wow. Cool question. Um, okay. Top two. Sheesh. Well, you could do the politician thing. If you don't like the question, answer a question you do like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just change the subject. I do think that question is quite broad. <laughs> uh, no, it is good. I just want to give two good myths because there, there are so many, right? It's, it's um, and I guess it's almost, uh, this is a very in time and place question because whatever's, I guess, in my current uh, media, you know, input that I'm just seeing those myths. But it's funny, like you then, things come, things do come in waves. So keto is a big thing and mm -hmm. intermittent fasting is, is a big thing and veganism is a big thing and, and whatever. Um, so it's, it's whatever's smacking you in the face at that time. Do you know what? There's nothing that's, you know, that I feel like is a big one or hormones for me is always a bit of a, uh, a trigger one in terms of, um, but it's not big, so it's not mainstream, but I guess you guys will see this, but is people making up magic with regards to hormones? Because, and I feel like it's a young personal trainer thing, 
young personal trainer, young nutritionist, young, like, and, I, and, and I'm guilty of this myself. Like I'll, I'll say to your audience is like, I don't, I don't, I, I'm so, I'm sarcastic sometimes and I'll make jokes and I'll call people gimps and idiots and whatever, but I'm also always like, I'm this, like, I go, I go, all humans are idiots. And then it's like, oh, you're saying you're not human. And I'm like, no, you idiot. I, I am human. I'm saying it from, I'm from a place of humility. We are stupid. Like, it's just unfortunately one of our traits of we make, we have an observation and a feeling. We're also emotionally led a lot of the time. I felt it. I saw it. I observed it. Therefore, it's fact. And that's why it's amazing. We've got the scientific method. But unfortunately, we're all idiots and we all get led down there. So you have to con constantly be challenging yourself, constantly questioning, which is hard work and time consuming. Um, so I, you know, I, I sort of um, a few years back, someone sent me one of my articles from like 2010. And I was like, oh, my goodness, like <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Um, a great measure of progress. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's another good quote of if you're not, I, I think it's a bit extreme, but if you're not embarrassed of who you were a year ago, you're not making enough progress. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, embarrassed is a strong word, but it just the premise of that quote is good. If you're not differing on some point of view, if you wouldn't change everything, you know, from <clears throat> several years ago, you're not developing as a, as a practitioner. So yeah. Yeah, someone I talked about in controlling insulin for fat loss and this, that, and the other. And I was like, oh <laughs> man, like what? Um, but you do get misled, right? You're 18, 20, yeah. you know, my my whole 20s, I just said stupid stuff because who were you learning from? Um, you know, 15, 17, whatever years ago. It's like they were jokers. They like the industry was full of jokers. Yeah. Uh, the biggest names. Um, I'm not gonna call them out because some of them are I'd dead love them too, um, <laughs> oh i'm kind of okay with that um yeah <laughs> there's one I mean, you've one got that's shooting to my mind hmm? what charles poliquin yeah yeah charles, <laughs> yeah. charles poliquin yeah, yeah not a huge lo fan i call him loliquin um <laughs> everything he says is just like lol so like, when oh, he you. passed away um in the most this is getting dark isn't <laughs> i don't it? want to this say is... hilarious of ways but like what a contradiction yeah um everyone was posting up these like selfies with him and oh like so sad blah 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 I mean it's I'm not happy that anyone passed away but I just I was like when is too soon to be like did we really lose that much or how much damage did he truly <laughs> do you know yeah like his strength yeah. and conditioning stuff not terrible nutrition he really sent us backwards in a big way yeah. and uh, like I am so passionate about driving the industry forward not backwards and talking against bullshit not adding to it he definitely added to it so like should we really be that sad don't know. Yeah, it was it was really interesting the way people reacted. Like some people messaged me and went, Paul Quinn's dead. Have you seen blah blah blah? Like, are you gonna comment? And I was like, I'm not sure that's appropriate. This is 24 hours. And yeah. you, what do you think I'm gonna go online and go, ha ha? It's like it's not a nice thing. I'm like, no. his family will be distraught. I'm not gonna yeah. be like, who would be that much of a twat? But um, but in terms of the industry we massively took a leap forward when that influence left the industry. Yeah, and, and what's worse is people going, he, you know, praising him so highly in terms of the industry. It's just like, I looked up to him and that was good. Like, leave it there. Don't start going. He made the industry better. He didn't, he completely ruined it. Yeah. Um, the, the last 10 years of his career. Um, and it's, it's a huge win for the industry that he's not there. I mean, unfortunately, I believe biosignature modulation is still being rolled out. Um, you can still be zero percent body fat. Yeah? It's a good business model, though, isn't it? God, people yeah. spend hundreds on cleanses and detoxes. Um, you, it it is the world's best. Um, I'd say world's best. That's probably more like Herbalife type stuff. But it, it, within the fitness industry, it's the most fancy, high end money making scheme I think someone's come up with in the in the fitness industry. Um, yeah. With regards to nutrition, sorry. People are so and, bought in. It's culty. Yeah. And, and even, even like I mentioned, some of those evidence-based nutrition courses still have elements of him within their course, despite the fact they know full well and, and students have been complaining. Why have you still got page whatever, 167 in the textbook? Like it's absolute crap. Mm. Um, you know, like oh, I'm going to pinch, <laughs> you know, the whole, for anyone listening who doesn't know, it's like you pinch these different eight or 12 different sites on the body 
And then you come up with these magical ratios. Like I literally was in the industry when he created this. And I remember him going, I've got all the data. I'm going to publish it. I've done it on these military, da, 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 da. I'm, I'll bring it out and you'll see. And then like 10 years later, I'm still going, so when are you going to, when are you going to publish that? Because um, it's really interesting. And I'm like, it would take five minutes to go, you know, he's basically going, if this is out of line with this, it's like, okay, take your earlobe skin fold and your testicle skin fold. And, or like, if you're female, like labia skin fold and compare them. And then if this one's two times more than this, you've got low testosterone. And you, that would take you five minutes to test his hypothesis. Just do it and then go to a lab and just get your bloods done and test your testosterone. And then we'd know if it was right or wrong. And in the 15 or whatever years it was about, no one once did that. But what they did post was before and afters, having done a zero carb, you know, lick of a prune is all the carbs you're allowed. That was one of his big things, wasn't it? Yeah. If it, what was it? It was like, if your skin on your bum isn't the same as the skin on the back of your hand, the only carbs you're allowed is a lick of a prune. Like, what? Why, why is no one laughing at this guy? They're like, yeah, dude, this guy's amazing. Um, yeah. But it, it was just the most bonkers thing that he came up with these ratios and then went, right, take my supplements to correct these things, but also train every day, twice a day, and don't eat any carbs. Yeah. Um, yeah. He and how would, convenient. Yeah. Who doesn't? He created, he actually created an Aussie skin <clears throat> box. Yeah. Oh, that's right. The, because he said the, the, the back handle. the back of the hips, the love handle was disproportionately large in Australia. <laughs> no. Yeah. I so, did not know that. I've learned something new. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what it indicated. Yeah, well, going back to your hormone thing, right? He's saying, I remember um, having my hammy done in like 2009 pinched. And it was like, oh, your estrogen levels are far too high because your hamstring fold. Is- Easy solution. <laughs> Stop eating out of plastic. <laughs> Don't microwave things. Mm. Oh, my God. Um, but but people, personal trainers with the eight-week qualifications from a course, start talking about hormones. Like, are you an endo? No. Like, mm. what? Like, do you even, can you spell hormones? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, like, what hormone is out? Like, your hormones are like, yeah. which one? And like, is that bad? It's just crazy that people get this like complicated thing that even GPs can't work with. They have to send you to Mm. a specialist, but PTs think they can, or Polyquin thinks he can fix it with BCAAs. Like it's just insane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, BCAAs. I remember one of his main disciples here in the UK, one like top UK PT. And uh, someone asked him on Twitter, like, oh, I see BCAAs like a really important, how many should I take? And his response with not like a hint of sarcasm was as many as you can afford. Wow. Like what kind of comment <laughs> is that from someone who's like this big time? Uh, and, and then you get all the sarcastic people going, well, I've got a really good job, so I can afford a lot of branch chain amino acids. So yeah, if I die now, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. They were um, at least taking a lot of gelatin. You know, yeah, in, in the capsule. There was yeah. definitely yeah, more yeah. gelatin in that in that protocol than there was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was the thing, wasn't it? He was like, take BCAs between your sets and stuff, and then and it was like one gram of fish oil per percentage body fat oh, per yeah. day. I'm, I'm, some of the most unbelievable. I sort of think I'll know that I've made it when I can say something so absurd, and people just don't question it just go, yeah, cool. Like, I mean, someone did actually leave a review on my podcast and it was Martin could tell me to eat shit and I would. We can say shit on the podcast. (laughs) Go for it. Okay, cool. Um, And and I would, because he's just, and I was like, oh, like, that's cool. I'm Um, moving up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm moving up. Like, let's see what I can get away with. Always polygon status. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Um, Now, okay. So one thing that we would like to abolish is anything to do with Lollican. Mm-hmm. Is there something else that comes to mind? Um, right. Maybe, perhaps, uh, that calorie deficits don't work. Yeah, but then- it's my body type that's stopping me. Is that yeah, something that's, that's pretty- coming up for you a lot? All, always a big one. I did a, um, what did I do the other day? I just did a reel on Instagram talking about this um, V shred guy. Have you seen him? All of his oh. adverts, huge. I wish and I obviously, hadn't. eat for your body, eat, 
eat right for your body type. And, it, it, you know, even in the UK, again, just... He has a million followers on Instagram, do you, Shred? And really? YouTube and all the rest of it. Yeah. Ah, it's a big marketing machine, that that whole thing. And again, yeah, doing your, these little quizzes to find out your body type. And, and it, it's big because people want answers, right? It's like, I, I always go talk about macro splits in terms of they just make people people pts feel a bit more like they're doing something like if you just go honestly it's mostly calories and they go but what about protein you go honestly it's just mostly calories they're like really i need a perfect macro split honestly it's just mostly about calories like and that's a boring message and i i want to sort of just say i you know i did this uh lots of people were kind of quoting me on it but fat loss it is simple, but it's not easy. So it is genuinely people, someone even going, how do you prove it? And I'm like, I don't need to prove it. That it's the laws of physics. Like this is prove gravity, thing. Martin. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's this case of a calorie deficit is it's, it is physics. It's the, the amount of energy in a cell and it's moving out and moving in. There's nothing fancy here. And it's, Oh, but what about the fact that back of packets are incorrect. Fine. Mo- remove that. What about the fact that people get hungry? Fine. Remove that. I'm talking about the actual logistical situation of if you've got more energy coming out of a cell than going in, it's a bank transaction. If you spend more than you put into your account, it goes down. There's not, there's nothing equivocal about this. Um, and so there's little nuances in terms of if we are counting calories, what, you know, we're getting less calories from certain foods than are maybe listed on labels. Like there's the whole fibrous matrix within nuts that, you know, almonds are the big poster food for that, like 30% less calories absorbed from nuts if you eat them. And I'm, and people are like, so it just proves that calories in calories out is wrong. And I'm like, are you mental? Like we've now proven, we know that you absorb 30% less. So we've just improved our equation. You've not disproved anything. And honestly, unless you are, an almondarian who only eats almonds. It's not changing anything. Like, Please tell me that's 30... not a diet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what's 30% of 30? Like, nine. Like, okay, it's now the calories for 21 grams of almonds. Like, it's irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Um, so, yeah, this whole idea that there's something more, it just unfortunately muddies the waters if people, I, I spent my whole tour, literally the first like three hours is discussing really in depth about energy balance. And, you know, you sort of put this, you know, the energy balance seesaw in and out and people are like, I've paid good money and this guy's supposed to be amazing. And he's talking to me about the seesaw, like this better be freaking good. And um, it was good uh, <laughs> if anyone heard the reviews. Uh, but anyway. Imagine uh, if Sarah did it. Yeah, it would have been so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, geez, I shouldn't have given that away, should I? Jeez, that's going to be like, come back to bite me. Like, where's Sarah? I've not seen Sarah. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it muddies the waters. As soon as people think there's a question there, they're like, oh, yeah, but. And it's like, no, there's no but. It's literally that. Now let's start discussing how you can stick to it, how, how good you are at tracking it, how much you're adhering, either knowingly or unknowingly, um, getting things wrong. And um, yeah, I would love it if there just wasn't people going, it, it's more than a, you know, it's more than a calorie deficit. It's not. And you don't even understand what a calorie deficit is. I've, I've literally just recorded a podcast episode, which will come up in a couple of weeks, but going, what's maintenance calories? Because people are like, Martin, if I jump straight back to maintenance calories after being on a, an aggressive diet, for instance, won't I gain fat? And I'm like, it's maintenance maintenance calories yeah i know but if i jump straight back to maintenance will i gain fat no maintenance (laughs) maintenance maintenance calories there's another three hours on the maintenance seesaw (laughs) yeah let's go back to the seesaw maintenance like it's unbelievable but the unfortunate situation there is they're going a predicted maintenance or the weirdest one that I just, I don't know how you can help someone who's just not doing this in their head, but no, I mean my maintenance before I started my diet, you know, when I was 20 pounds heavier and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, 
we've got issues here if you think that's maintenance calories for the rest of life so but yeah um i'd love it if people stop trying to question calorie deficit mm. i think that's with the, the whole um concept that. of the you know diets don't work concept too because there's a yeah. lot of misappropriation with maintenance to begin with and right. the, the behavior change required to achieve the loss is the behavior change required to maintain the loss but I suppose that's where the difficulty lies. And that's what you're talking about, the nuance, you know. It's not just as simple as eat the calories. No, yeah. People just go, oh, so you just uh, eat less and exercise more. That sounds, no, it's like, no. No one's ever, you know, people have said that. But it's, um, I mean, that would work if you could stick to it. Mm. Um, and, and there's, oh, so you can just eat whatever the hell you want. It's like, well, yeah, you actually can. There's lots of gimps on YouTube who are like eating the whey and Pop-Tart diet. That was a big thing. When if it fits your macros came out, just people going, I just do pop tarts and whey, and I've and I'm getting shredded. And it's like eh, it's not hard it's when you're 21. Point, yeah, yeah. Um, no one's actually saying that in their right mind that that people should not care about dietary quality. It's they're not mutually ex- exclusive, but people create this unnecessary dichotomy between quantity and quality. It's like no, great, focus on both, um, but quantity matters a lot more. Um, And it is a big thing, actually. In the UK, lots of our, unfortunately, funding for COVID research went to this moron. And I I probably shouldn't name him, but I'm going to. I don't know if he's a professor or a doctor, but his name's Tim Spector. And he's like a a gut health researcher. And his team's work is actually quite interesting like it's uh, they they're part of the research group who did this stuff essentially your glycemic response between individuals to the same food is wildly wildly different but but not just we kind of knew that right one person versus another is sort of different but as in it's this whole thing of like someone can eat ice cream and and it has a you know like a high GI and and this person's eating white bread and white bread's got low GI and it's just thrown really what we understood as glycemic index out the window. It's just like people are getting these massively different responses, but unfortunately he's now, I believe my opinion um, (laughs) for legal reasons uh, (laughs) is that this is just my opinion of what he is doing, but it may not be factual (laughs) subtext. I'm definitely right. Uh, Is (laughs) just seen money signs and fame signs and he wants you know i don't know a payday for all his hard work in the lab and gone we can now create the best fat loss diet for someone mm. and it's like whoa 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 like sorry when did glycemic index impact energy balance particularly like it's super interesting uh, that it's these dramatically different responses and that might pertain to metabolic health or something like that but he's not gone past just literally measuring an outcome and like an initial outcome rather than you know just a simple biomarker whereas he's not done a fat loss diet where he goes i'm so what's happening now is you know if you do it's called zoe i think or something or other but it's like if you eat right for your you know whatever they're calling it metabolic type or you eat these foods that are better for you you'll lose weight better and it's like you've not shown that like mm. you i can eat high gi or whatever and i know i've got a really high blood glucose response and high insulin response and still lose fat if i'm in a deficit it's you've not done anything magical if he shows by eating these foods and my specific foods like if i don't particularly respond to ice cream and it doesn't impact my hunger. I mean, ice cream is maybe a bad one to choose, but like potato or whatever. Um, And I'll be more satiated. Then it's like, cool. We know that changing hunger is a super useful tool to focus on when trying to get someone because you don't want to live your life hungry, right? Like I lose weight. I don't want to be hungry for the rest of my life. It just, I won't maintain this. It's only, we've only got that sort of finite (laughs) thing until we just crack um but he's not showing that so it that side of things really frustrates me that that it's kind of going towards um uh, that's another thing dna testing that's that was one of my th- food intolerance testing dna testing you know we can create the perfect diet based on your dna like my my only published 
peer-reviewed published um, paper in experimental physiology is literally on what's called the angiotensin converting enzyme polymorphism. And you, I literally see these DNA companies using this thing that I have a pretty good knowledge on going, oh, people with the DD allele, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, that isn't what the research shows. But they're going, yeah, like we, we had DNA tests when I worked for British weightlifting. Um, these are um, phenomenal athletes. Um, you know, Olympic Games, standard athletes beating, you know, beating other drug using countries, athletes. They're, they're just, you know, we did well. And um, they are strong as hell. And, you know, one of our female weightlifters, we had, uh, I think it was a Hungarian retired weightlifter. And, and honestly, the, the difference, you know, when she was lifting full on man, masculine, you know, deep was like, Ugh, whatever. And then 10 years later, she'd actually, a lot of the masculinization had gone. And I was like, that's really interesting to see that. But her best lives, her and this weightlifter with our weightlifter were very, very similar on like the raw lifts um, or, or kind of just you you squats and stuff like that whereas this woman had done you know years and years of weightlifting since she was young and also probably been more robust because of drug use and so was better but anyway this athlete did one of these dna tests and she's phenomenally strong phenomenally talented and it literally said you would excel in endurance sports you should not do strength <laughs> these things you will not excel you will not adapt blah 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 and it's like it just shows you that we don't currently have DNA testing that, you know, training wise, we're a lot further ahead of nutrition and training is still just BS. Like it doesn't, you know, people are talking about DNA testing kids to see where they should go into sport and stuff. It's just like, it doesn't work. We're not there. And even then what happens if you don't enjoy it? Like that's also a big factor, uh, weirdly. So, um, yeah, I, I don't like this whole thing of like, do a DNA test, we'll give you a diet. Do a food intolerance test, like food intolerance test, just do not wet. There isn't one on the planet that exists. That was my other master's research on food intolerance testing. Um, there isn't one that exists. I wish there was. That's why I did my research on it. Industry funded research, in fact. They wanted us to publish data that showed their, showed it worked. It would have made them a lot of money. And um, when we found it was BS, guess what happened? It didn't get published. Um, bias, so, here we go. Exactly. Yeah. Publication bias. Right. So um, I wish all of these myths would die. I know I've, I've done more than two, but uh, it's I'm good, fine yeah. with that. <laughs> I wonder if these things are seductive to people because everybody wants to blame something else other than eating too much energy or they want to feel mm. special. It's like my personal DNA or my special intolerances or something. They don't want mm. to know that like these are just the laws that humans live and die by. You know, mm. gain and uh, lose by. Yeah. And I also think there's an element of, uh, and I try and we te we've got a case studies residential within MNU for our sort of full with honest students. And I talk to people about making your client feel like a snowflake. So there's certain supplements where you use them quite often, like vitamin D, you end up using it with a lot of clients because of just the, you know, modern day. And the fact that it's so difficult to get it from food. And uh, so there's a different way you can sell vitamin D is like, oh, with, you know, I'll, I'll give most of my clients vitamin D. Like no one's paying you X, you know, whatever, hundred pounds an hour for advice that you give to all your clients. Like the wording matters in terms of buy-in and adherence. So going in your specific situation, based on X, Y, Z, these blood tests, for instance, because we know the placebo is flipping powerful as well, right? It's like you tell someone something, you get them to take something. You touch someone and, and do a test, i.e. biosignature modulation, and it suddenly yeah, feels more... Yeah, the, the placebo works more. And, you know, if you inject something, you pass something through the skin, the placebo is even stronger. Like even if you're giving them a, a sugar pill then you inject sugar. The injection of sugar will work more of whatever outcome you're looking at. Um, I think they've done it in, um, what's it called? Phobias. So, you know, you can, people can get over phobias with just this tablet placebo. And then they do a bit of a physical examination and they give them this injection and they're like, literally, oh my goodness, my phobia is cured. And these are people who've been like completely debilitated. And it's like, that's how frigging strong the placebo is. Yeah. Um, 
So you tell them that the vitamin D is specific to them and they actually bother to take the frigging tablet instead of forgetting all the time. Mm. Um, so, you know, stuff like that in terms of this is your DNA. Like, look at these DNA tests, right? Like, I don't, like people have sent me back on my Twitter days. I literally said to people, send me these reports you're getting. So I could just look at these things. And honestly, it's the, what, what's the nutrition advice? <laughs> like they're all the same, eat more vegetables and there, <laughs> there'll be a little difference somewhere, but it genuinely is just cut out processed foods. Your genotype says that you shouldn't eat processed foods. And it's like, no way. Like, oh, I'm definitely going to follow this advice now. It's like the same advice that you've got from, you know, when you're 10 years old. Um, yeah. So, but it feels magic because, oh, I specifically should eat green vegetables. No, I never would have guessed that. But it turns out that I've got the genotype where eating crap doesn't, you know, makes me put on body fat. Um, like, are you aware of Spencer? Yeah. Are you aware of Spencer Nadolsky? Yeah. Yes. Dr. Yeah. Um, so the first time we, I think it was the first time we spoke at a conference together, he, um, he particularly enjoyed this thing. I, and it was about body types, actually, like you said earlier. But I was like, you know, for your body type, it's like, depending on what your body type is, for your body type, you need a calorie deficit to lose fat. Like, and for your body type, you need to hit. And then he did this quote tweet and it sort of went a little bit viral, which is quite cool. But um, it is literally, this is what the DNS tests are doing. It's like, you need to eat better and exercise more. And like, cool, I'm going to stick to that because I paid for this stupid test um so all of these things just they they help because someone's paid money they think it's specific to them um like you said like my personal whatever i'm special i'm a snowflake um and everyone is you know different in some way or another and this is why it's coaches are really important good coaches sorry are really important because you get a knack for going and, you know, through your consultation, through listening, whatever, you get an idea of what you're hearing and they're reporting. And actually, do you know what might help in your situation is X, Y, Z. And, you know, as well as we know, emo the emotional support side of things just kind of works for most people. Um, and it can be really useful if you can make it unique and make someone buy into the process and support them in the same way as some crappy test does, but you just mm -hmm. don't have to fleece people um for wow. money for the test yeah which is what i quite love about um the way that you teach things because you understand you know not just the science of how it works but the kind of the methods to get people to buy in and, and I, I feel like everything that you teach is is really practical i imagine the mac nutrition live day that's coming up soon is going to be no different yeah uh that's a a really cool one actually because uh it's ended up, we unfortunately lost one of our international speakers, um, but I have I try not to speak at these things because- I, say, uh, I feel like this is an opportunity for you, Martin, to come in and be really, really punch at home, you know? And that's what I've done. So I've taken his slot. <laughs> uh, Did he last? Uh, yeah, well, I, I get to pick the order. So oh, I perfect. Get what I want. <laughs> you should have confetti come down from the ceiling and everyone gets a prize under their chair. Now rate who your favourite speaker was. And a cape. You definitely need a cape. <gasps> Can you come out with a cape oh. and you have to, like, flap it like this? Have you seen the suit I wear? Oh, in fact, hold on, stay there. Do you, okay. do you put the video of this out? Yeah. Was it audio? Yeah, okay. It'll be on YouTube too. I can't. I hope it's a cape. Is he coming back with a cape? It better have sequins. Is, is it this a is my, I don't know if you've seen this, but this is like my turquoise suit that I wear. You uh, remind me of Mask. You know that movie with Jim Carrey? I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a bit like that. There's actually a yellow suit that I thought, because I think he wears a yellow suit in that film as well. I was or like, maybe. He does. Yeah, he definitely yeah. does. He's okay. bright. A bright coloured suit of some sort. And there might be a green one as well. Uh, but either way, yeah. So I don't normally, that's for the graduation ceremony. Um, that I wear that that suit for our students. But the the live day is cool because I get to sort of engineer what I think people need to hear. And um, there's some cool topics. Um, one of the first ones I was actually going to speak on this, but we've got a probably someone who's a bit more of an expert than me on this, especially with regards to intuitive eating. And is that is that coming up? Is that a big thing? 
that you guys are hearing a lot about. Yeah, well, bridging between like whether it's intuit- intuitive versus informed and then how do we actually, yeah. like what are people saying is intuitive versus what actually is it and all that kind of stuff. So you're speaking about intuitive eating where it meets weight loss, right? And the reason that I yeah. think it's really interesting is because intuitive eating is obviously a weight neutral approach. People yeah. don't view intuitive eating to lose weight, but I have lots of people come to me like, Oh, I'm just sick of tracking and I want to do informed eating. You know, how can I intuitive. lose weight? Do- Sorry. Yeah. Intuitive eating. Yeah. How can I lose weight doing this? Yeah. Um, so I think it's, it's a really hot right now and people need to understand it. A hundred percent. And that's, so that's why I came up with the talk title and wanted to speak on it, but just got someone who's an actual intuitive eat- eating practitioner. Okay. So you know, like you said, it, it's a neutral, um, weight neutral approach. And it, the reason I wanted this talk to happen is because people are creating camps, like a lot of the non-diet, anti-diet, whatever crowd um, are, are basically going all diets fail. All diets are damaging. No one should in try to intentionally lose weight it will oh. give you an eat whatever which is completely untrue and but super unfortunately, disempowering too you know like they yeah, forget that some exactly. people aren't happy you have no control it's your genetics yeah exactly Fucking super genetics. disempowering um and so it's basically it's not saying how do you how to intuitive eat to lose weight it's mm-hmm. going which which of these tools do you need at this time and when, et cetera? And you brought up a good point there about, um, Dean, when you said intuitive eating, like it's not a trademark term. People go, that's not intuitive eating. It's like, I can use the word intuitive. Like you don't own it. No one owns it. Um, but yes, if we are talking about intuitive eating, like capital I, capital E, this specific methodology, yes, it's a 10 step process, but I'm eating intuitively. Like I can use that word if I want, but then you almost start going, yeah, informed eating or auto-regulated eating, et cetera. Um, But just knowing when it's appropriate, it's just a cool topic for people to be aware of, aware of, and to know that you don't, because I think some practitioners now are like, I don't know if I can help people with weight loss because I just feel really conflicted because so-and-so says, and I'm like, so-and-so's an idiot. <sighs> um, but that's not to say that intuitive eating is a bad thing. Like you don't have to be one or the other. Like there are oh. times when you really should probably push a client towards an intuitive eating practitioner to work through that process. Cause that's really going to benefit them at yeah. this time. Um, so that's one of the talks. And then the, I don't, this isn't in the order, but we've got one on body image from a, an actual body image researcher, super evidence-based. And again, like you said uh, about we're doing practical strategies. So it's how can you actually move towards having positive body image? Because again, there's this thing of, you know, if I lose weight, my happiness will improve or I will love myself more, et cetera. And it's like a bit of a, a fallacy often. Um, that really it doesn't bring happiness. Like you need to kind of be happy with yourself and not, you're not going to hate yourself into change. Like it's not going to suddenly give you the job you want or the partner you want or whatever. There's a lot of self-work you need to do. Um, But again, a brilliant uh, thing of, of helping that. And then coupled with the third speaker who's talking on binge eating and uh, which is just a, you know, a massive topic. Um, uh, the, The spectrum of, you know, from just a binge if people use that as a colloquial term up to you know towards the clinical end of the range but everything in between which the fitness industry is so rife with of um i i make this a bit of a joke on my tour of people going you know martin i i I was i came home i was a bit stressed and i just binged and i really I, i ate and ate and ate until i was sick and then i sort of cried because i was really sad with myself for binging and then just ate a bit more and then i just cried a bit more and i just really hated myself and then i slept and i woke up crying and then i binged and then you know, the next day I woke up and I'm just thinking, I just want some advice on that situation. What macro should I do today? I'm like, what, what? No, that's not normal. You need to go and get that sorted. No, but I was just wondering if there's, or is there a supplement I can take? And I'm like, you need, you need, yeah. Should I fast today? I'm like, you need to go get help. You don't need to look for a magic supplement or what macros, you know, should I try and re-insulin sensitize myself today by doing a bit of a low cut? It's like, you've got an issue. Um, But people just asking all the wrong questions. So 
yeah, some, again, a really practical talk on binge eating. And then I'm going to finish off with probably something on rapid fat loss co- protocols. So just because it's something I asked so much about and people, whenever I go on like a podcast like this and, and chat about it, I, I occasionally will go in the comments. Like it's dangerous, right? If you go read comments about yourself, just like <laughs> people full-time jobs have just been nasty on the internet. Um, but people just almost really m- not listening to all and mi- misrepresenting the, but, or I've just maybe not been clear. That's also another thing is like, oh yeah, I didn't in this podcast mention that because I thought people knew that. Mm. So it's a, it'll be really nice for me to actually have slides that I can work through in a, you know, sort of pragmatic fashion and build the picture for people. So they understand everything and then go, and then this is the practical protocol that you would lose uh, use to do you know a rapid fat loss um phase if you wanted to and if it suits you um so yeah that's the day 27th of november i can't wait that's a really like interesting dichotomy of um the other three alongside you i know right i know i don't know if you should lead with rapid or end with it i've got to end because because i can use of course (laughs) right but but yeah, because it'll be kind of like sh- now you've heard all of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean shit as in it's shit. That's just I know. me being I know. strange. Yeah, like, yeah. I know. Now, if you want to do some cool stuff, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah it's like nice. the fluffy stuff, right? Isn't it? It's like I'm, I really care about your mindset and your body image and love yourself and blah blah. But by the way, let's get shredded as hell. Like, <laughs> let's all post six packs on our asses, like shredded glutes, baby. Like, yeah, it's it's a real. Di- it, you're so right. But I think for me is by if I do have the last talk, what I can do is show, um, I can almost build from where they've said, like if they've talked about body image in a certain way, like with obsessive tendencies and like daily weighing and this, that and the other, I can go, remember what we said in the body image talk or remember what we said in the intuitive eating or remember what we said in the binge eating one. Like if you're doing a rapid fat loss thing and it's pushing you towards these binge eating behaviors, because there's still this myth that, or if you have a bigger calorie deficit, you're more likely to end up with disordered eating. Like the disordered eating research doesn't show that like at all. It's not a thing. You can, you can get an eating disorder, eating maintenance calories. Um, like that's what orthorexia essentially is. You know, there's nothing about a calorie deficit in orthorexia. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think by going at the end, I can go, this is frigging cool, but just be careful as with any dieting thing is like, we do just need to remain reflective of if it starts pushing someone into certain tendencies as a good coach, we can kind of just outline that rather than the old school mentality of don't worry about that binge, just jump back on the bandwagon and try harder. And I'll just cheer you on a little bit louder. It's yeah. like, let's yeah, maybe reevaluate. Yeah. Or shaming um, the client. You didn't want it's it enough. It's all <laughs> yeah. 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 That's oh, the funny that. one. Is it? People joke, like that. a 21 year old, oh with no job, no kids, no responsibilities. Like you just don't want it enough. Like just, why don't you just prepare 42 meals a week? Like I do like to this <laughs> mom of single mom of like four children with a job. Like, Oh damn. man, we all have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, how much you want it. <laughs> yeah. So this is for not just coaches, is it? Anyone can come. No. On. Yeah. We, we open it to absolutely everyone. We have this really big, beautiful conference center yeah it is sad that i would love to come and do something over in australia like i flip in my one time in australia was was pretty much the best 16 days of my life if i'm really honest uh it was super cool but uh in the uk in uh, east midlands conference center and it's just open to everyone it's it's very much pitched that's the one of the main compliments i get is dumbing you know dumbing down the science um to make it available for uh, for everyone and that's what we say to our experts is yes we want you to cite the evidence and the research but really want it to be something that anyone whether they're a coach or whether they're hearing it for themselves um can take away and learn and be able to implement it so Mm. um that's the big thing and just uh uh, thanks for kind of the opportunity to talk about it. I'm, I, we, we've already got a big sort of close to 300 people now um, attending. The other cool thing about it is, is we do have an after party as well. So it's like Ooh. a dinner and an after party and stuff. So it's a real nice fitness event in terms of fitness, health, nutrition event in terms of it's nice when you get a lot of people who give a crap about evidence-based stuff in yeah. a room together. Yeah. Um, because I know a lot of these, the personal trainers and nutritionists and dietitians who come along 
they're like, oh, my colleagues are, you know, still doing bias signature <laughs> or whatever. And so it's nice to actually talk to someone who's like, yeah, let's talk about something that's actually You're a bit people. more client centered. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, if people I'll just say this as well. Uh, I'm doing a a, um, a a code for anyone who signed up to my email list to to actually get like 40 percent off a ticket price. So um, wow. maybe I can send you the link. Yeah, we'll yeah, put it in, we'll the in the show notes for sure. Yeah, in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, That'd cool. Be cool. I think there's a real art in because because you said you know like dumbing down the science so it's accessible to everyone. I think there's a real mm-hmm. art in simplifying the scientific jargon and all of the complications mm-hmm. and oversimplifying it to the point that it's hardly true. Mm-hmm. And I think um, you and Math Nutrition Uni do a really good job of simplifying the science so that it's palatable or palatable as mm-hmm. the, the Americans. <laughs> Americans say, um, palatable. Oh, but man. it's still, it's still, it, you still knowing all the things that you need to know just mm. without the jargon it's stuff you can remember. Cause it's yeah. said with a narrative and a story. And I just, yeah, I really love it. Yeah. Thanks very much. It is. I think it, it's one of those things. If you can't explain someone, something to a child or you, your grandparents or someone with no prior knowledge, you probably don't understand it well enough Mm. Uh, yourself so it is one of those things that's that's why i think people come out of malnutrition uni with so much confidence and it's hard to really explain why that happens we you know it's in our tagline and it, it you can't sell it you know if, if we were sales people which we're not very good at but it just kind of sells itself which is fortunate um but it's you can't really sell you will be more confident after doing this course and you know we have people who are you know, you, they've done a degree and a master's from an amazing university and in nutrition, and they still don't have the confidence to put themselves out there or work with clients or no. And then they come out of malnutrition uni one year and they're like a changed person. Of, and I think it genuinely is that thing. They've been taught in such a way that they, are, they don't just understand the what, they genuinely understand the why. And like you said, the science enough to go, I really understand why I'm telling you this and I really understand why it's going to work. And I really understand if it doesn't work for you, what potentially adaptations are that need to be made for you. Um, it's not your blood. But it is. Yeah. yeah. Or the pinch on your ass. But I think it's because they're <laughs> learning from people that have been in the space, right? Like, whereas you, mm. you go to uni and like, you know, you go, oh, that was really interesting information. What do I do with it now? Yeah. 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 yeah now what? So you know? Yeah. Yeah. That is really true. If you learn from, we call it us ourselves like academic practitioners is like we are we are in the trenches like everyone you learn from every single lecturer is in the trenches working frontline with clients and has done so for many years but they've also got all of the you know three to seven ten years worth of academic study behind that mm. career so yeah, yeah i feel like, like uni's learning through mechanism and then this would be more through like mechanism and application yeah you know? yeah yeah definitely yeah. We normally like to wrap up a podcast with, well, our tagline for the podcast is how to be less shit. Um, Just driving home positivity, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Love it. We teach people how to be good. We teach them how to be less shit. Yeah. Because like you said, everyone is an idiot and we're all kind of shit at stuff and we're all just trying to get better, which is why I got this tattoo, by the way. Oh, wrong hand. Mm. I got a moustache tattoo on my finger. Uh, only wow. what six months ago, and I'm yeah. 32, which is something you normally do as a teenager. Because I was like, yeah, well, yeah, you do reach an age where you realize everyone else is an idiot, and so are you. So why yeah. not just get a stupid tattoo? Um, yeah, and here we are. So how to be less shit? If people could walk away with one take-home message, something to remember, what might that be? I know it's a lot of pressure, isn't it? That's yeah, a, we've covered. It's a, it's we've a covered big it. question. <clears throat> Who are you really, Martin? Yeah. Deep down. Yeah. Yeah. So how how could you be less shit? One one thing to take away. Like my my initial thing is I think it is really. I'm gonna this is a bit of a gripe of mine. So I'm gonna say this, and it's a tricky one. Like I could go read more books or like get more sleep or be more grateful for life or whatever. But I this is a bit of a hard hitting one, I guess, in a way, that people do need need to stop in gyms no they need to start taking 
taking responsibility and so i'm not big on this whole uh, this idea of personal responsibility of you know the reason that people are unhealthy and out of shape is only personal responsibility whatever it's like there's so many factors that play into it in terms of where you were born your socioeconomic status your genetics like flashback they do matter we just currently can't measure exactly how and what we should do is about it but they frigging matter loads um but people need to start taking responsibility for and i get this so much through social media people just want me to be able to send them one instagram reply or answer a comment like i just did an entire month of content on pcos like really good evidence-based content content on pcos that all the time i'm thinking what's practical i did one post of what you should eat what foods you should eat for pcos and like went into some decent detail and people were commenting, I'm so confused. There's so much conflicting information in this area. I just don't know what to eat. And I'm like, that is what my post is about. And like, my sarcastic response is, ignore everyone but me. I'm always right. Do what I say. And you won't be confused, dumbass. Like, if you, you're just listening to too many people, just listen to me. I'm always right. Um, but, but it is in terms of, you do need to stop looking for quick fixes. If people just go, right, I'm going to invest a bit in my learning. Um, we're creating a layperson's course. We're creating a Mac Nutrition Uni for the layperson. We've been writing it now for about three years. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like I think it's about 500 lectures now, um, but they're like they're like short ones, and you don't have to do them all. They're like there's like a health a health track and a fat loss weight loss kind of track and a muscle gain one and a sport and exercise but there's like a fundamentals foundations thing that everyone does um but if people can just invest a bit in their learning and go i'm not going to rush to the end result i'm going to go i'm going to take a step back i'm going to try and just forget everything that's come before that like the fact i've done keto the fact i've done whatever i'm going to start again with like almost a blank slate get rid of all of my stupid biases and go I'm going to invest in my learning and, and, and in learning about myself is what I mean. Not, I'm not telling people to go do courses. It's like, I'm going to start now and I'm not just going to go, I'm doing Herbalife. Oh, it didn't work. That was crap. I'm going to do V shreds thing. Oh, that was crap. I'm going to do a different thing. Like go with it as a process and be reflective and don't rush to your end result. Like get a coach if you can afford one and work with them consistently and be reflective as you go and and move in a direction like like fine tune what seems to work for you rather than just being completely erratic and wanting a result straight away maybe even do the the early work of go and see a counselor maybe about the fact that you binge eat or you've got a poor relationship with food or whatever mm -hmm. and then and then because once you have all of that done Everything becomes easy. You can just do my rapid fat loss protocol and just get shredded. But but it's you have to have everything else in place first. Like just eat well for a week. Don't diet. Don't do anything. Don't cut out any foods. Don't just flip and buy a vegetable. Buy some legumes, which I bang on about all the time. Like in the West, we just don't eat enough legumes in general because they're time consuming, but you can now get microwave lentils that are actually taste quite nice. Like I'd never eat a lentil in my life if it wasn't for being able to get it quickly and, mm. and um, easily. So I think that's my thing is just like slow down and take responsibility for making yourself less shit. That's it in a nutshell, slow down and take responsibility for making yourself less shit. That's a great less shit tip. It's very because the right way is usually the fastest way, isn't mm. it? Yeah. And I say this to people as well is my, I say about my Instagram stories, like, okay, my Instagram stories are maybe not as fun as, you know, watching your favorite celebrity gimp on Love Island or whatever. And they're not as gossipy or whatever. But if you genuinely invested your time in watching every one of my Instagram stories for a year or two or three, whatever you've been watching other junk, there are, I do get DMs from people going, You've never heard from me before. I've never given you any money before, never done any of your courses, but I just read all your posts and watched your stories and just kind of learned and adjusted based on stuff you said, and you've changed my life. Thanks very much. And it's like, that's great. you know, I'd love to be able to do that with more people. They, they're a bit of a diamond in the rough because they paid attention. No mm. one really cares about free information, you know, enough. they don't care enough. Um, you know, they don't assign enough value. 
but yeah i think for me it's just like do do the work the slow work and yeah don't do it it's the you know the fastest way and, and except for doing the rapid fat loss exactly. after you've done all the slow stuff <laughs> exactly like even rapid fat loss it's still like okay you do a two week rapid fat loss phase and it's like well i've got 50 pounds to lose it's like you can't just do rapid for 50 pounds like it's, <laughs> well to be honest you can like people have but I, I maybe shouldn't say that on there but one of the case studies I often show is like mr ab it's like a medical case study he fasted for 385 days yeah, that's right have you seen that one yeah yeah um, yeah Insane. it's mad yeah. um and he got shredded <laughs> like well it's like I just sort of imagine him like on the stage afterwards, just like bam, like I'm I'm ripped. I've eaten for a um, year. <laughs> yeah. But just yeah. imagine how good that food tasted. I mean, probably actually probably left him with a whole bunch of problems. Because mm-hmm. because he was like given the vitamin injections that right, and there was some like yeast yeah. in there as well, and a few other things to keep him normal. And, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's a long time. Hard. Um, now, now normally we go to something worth sharing as well. I think that we're I think, short on time. I think we've got plenty. Now this goes alongside our um our be less shit tip too, because this game is actually called shitty choices. Okay. Right? Now it's a would you rather game. An A or B. Would you rather A or would you rather B? So what normally choice? we would just select, but I'm going to give you options. Number one, two, three, or four. Okay. Three. Rule that time. Three. All right, Martin. I haven't read these. To either. finish the podcast on a note. Would you A, rather make out with someone, feel something wet and realise they just peed their pants? Or B, drunkenly make out with someone and throw up all over them? Ooh. Uh, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'm, gonna, if I'm going to give away like my sort of kinks by, by, <laughs> by talking about this. <laughs> I would love no, to I go mean, with you, A. You don't have to go, I would love to vomit on someone. I, I would I love to give it away. I would love their pee on me. That would be amazing. No, it's not. Uh, I think vomit's gross, right? So probably I'll go with the first one. Like I was making out with them. That's nice. Cool. And then I feel something wet. They wet themselves. That's probably because I was so good. I'm going with that one. Nervous pee. It's because you're so famous now. That's what it is. Yeah. It's all in there interpretation. It was a fan. Yeah. yeah. Fan I've pee. interpreted the A. Like, yeah. I like it's it. It's actually become a positive. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good game. I like that. It's a risky game. There's some horrendous questions in there. Oh, really? Like, yeah, they'll really make you question whether or not you should play with family members. And so the, yeah. the way it normally works is there's an A and B card so that you don't get like influenced by other people. So you just go like A and then you do. You're in a group of four people and you're like, oh, you'd yeah. rather take it in the bum. That's interesting. <laughs> so like, like on the count of three, you, yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, most people are born with some sort of sense of shame or can be embarrassed somehow. I have been missing that since birth. So I think, and I, I look, if I do ever sense any sort of awkwardness, I, I like to bask in it. I quite enjoy it. Mm, um, right. So this game is, was made for me. It's actually it really to was. come full circle to finish this podcast too. This game was actually given as a secret Santa gift to an old, an old coach of ours who was a Mac uh, uni graduate. Yes. And then she gave oh, it to cool. us because she was traveling. There you go. Oh, so thank you yeah, for the shitty choices. <laughs> yeah, no. Now, um, if people wanted to go to your live seminar or reach out for your other services, like your course, for example, where mm. could they find you? Best places are, I guess, in the show notes, they can jump on my Mac now where they'll, they'll get that code. Mm-hmm. Um, and best place really to find me these days is Instagram. I'm on there every day you know, sharing stories and whatnot. And I, I do my best to go through my DMs and get back to people as much as I can. Um, so, and then all my, my website, macnutritionuni.com. Like if you type in macnutrition, like it all comes up, you know, top of Google and stuff. So um, if they want to know more about macnutrition uni and studying, you know, our next intake, it's kind of a good time. They can start thinking about it. We're, we're actually creating a prospectus, like a proper, you know, you know uni looking prospectus so that people can see, you know, the types of jobs that people are getting, um, you know, what they're doing with the qualification, where, you know, where it's highly respected and this, that and the other. Um, So mattnutritionuni.com for the the 12 month qualification uh, to become a fully insurable nutritionist, uh, MNU certified nutritionist. And then, yeah, martinmcdonald.com. And like I mentioned there, my podcast as well, if they, if they're into your podcast, they might be into uh, listening to mine so that's not another nutrition podcast uh, on iTunes and Spotify and YouTube all that jazz so yeah love it well thank you for coming on no thanks very much I enjoyed it
It was fun and informative. Uh, had a laugh. That's what we always want to. Bit inappropriate, which I love. Just the right amount of sprinkle of, <laughs> of that. Yeah. Stuff. Bagging out dead people, you know. That's what my, my PA was like, oh, they might ask you what your most em- embarrassing experience is. And I was like, how do you know that? And she was like, oh, I listened to one of their podcasts and they asked someone else it. And I said, oh, uh, you know, and what, what's made me think of that is you saying, oh, I don't really get embarrassed and stuff. And I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to come up with anything like what's embarrassing, but then you saying they're a bit inappropriate. And uh, when this is, I wasn't particularly, I basked in it. And they, this is what's really brought it up in my mind because I was, I was doing a talk on intermittent fasting, right? And I've said intermittent fasting a million times. You said intermittent for, fasting? <laughs> you damn right. You even, even worse. I said, I went, it was a big conference, right? So I'm talking and I'm like, yeah. So, and I went, I'm a big, a big fan of intermittent fist. I mean, uh, and then, and then everyone just, I sort of went, did they hear that? And I went, I definitely didn't just say intermittent fisting. And I was like, then, so everyone just starts laughing in the audience and it was being filmed. So I looked at the camera and was like, I just said that on camera and I'm not going to live that down. And then it was like on the internet and then everyone's like, oh, you're a fan of intermittent fisting. And anyway, weighing on you apparently. um, Yeah. But anyway, so I just thought, yeah, the right amount had been appropriate. It w- but I don't know why that came out of my mouth. You know, like a Freudian slip. I was, <laughs> I was just like, oh, my goodness. That's um, unbelievable. <laughs> okay. Um, so close. Yet good so mornings, far. the exercise. You know what that is, right? Um, when I was going through my PT course, one of the teachers there I was quite easily embarrassed, but he was just like a, a proper guy, you know, like w- couldn't joke around with you, whatever. And he said... Right. Uh, Instead of good mornings, he called them morning glories. And funny, but extra funny because of who it, the like the yeah. mouth that it came out of. Like, yeah, oh yeah. my goodness, yeah. like no one should know that I get boners sometimes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so oh, that's hilarious. Oh, yeah, that Intimate fisting man. with morning glories. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure, Martin. That's a great yeah. way to finish. That'll also be our 60 second snippet. So look out for that. No. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Cool. Mm.